All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at this must tool MT11 auto ranging true RMS multimeter. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So here is the meter in its original packaging. And before we get too far down the road, I did want to say that I was contacted by Banggood and they asked if I would do a review of this meter. So they sent it to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. The packaging shows the product, but one of the things I'll mention is, is that there are two different versions, an MT-10 and an MT-11. My understanding is the difference is the 10 has uh, alkaline batteries or rechargeable batteries that can be used. The MT-11 has an internal lithium ion battery that can be recharged. So we're happy to get the MT-11. So inside the box, we have this uh, case, this carrying case, and it feels like it's made out of some sort of canvas. It's a little rough, but it's not, uh, it's not too bad. Um, this is a small, small meter. Um, it's about the size of a cell phone. So let's take a quick peek at it. And there is our meter. On the side, we have a function button. It looks like we have a capacitance button, and then we have a light um, that we can turn on. It has a rubberized case, or maybe it's a plastic case that kind of protects this thing. Inside the packaging, we have two leads. Let's take a look at these leads. I'm not sure you can you be able to read that. I'm not sure I can read it. It says 10 amps, and uh, that's about it. These leads appear to have some sort of shroud or protection on them. And look at, look at how they accentuate with the other color. Here is the power button. Let's go ahead and see if we can turn this thing on. So there we go. And there is a plastic film on this meter. And I really don't like that. So let me go ahead and get that off. Um, push this button on the side. And then this light comes on. Pretty handy, I guess, if you're in a dark space. Now, taking a look at these leads, they feel like they're made out of like a PVC. Um, they're not they're not silicon. They have a little bit of memory, but they're they're soft and they're somewhat pliable and flexible, which is nice. These look smaller than your typical multimeter inputs. So this would be your red input here, and then this would be your common input here. Let's see what else we have. We have a USB-C, well, awesome for that, uh, cable. And this is for charging this device. I have not located the USB-C charging port yet. Okay, one thing I was able to discover is, is that you can pop this out and then you see the charging port to recharge your battery. I'm not exactly uh, how I feel sure about how I feel about that. Um, it would be nice if I could just recharge this without taking the protective case off. But um, that's just the way it's going to be. Instruction manual looks to, uh, to be reasonably well written, but we'll take a look at this uh, with a fine tooth comb. All right, let's take a look at the website. Okay, here is the Banggood website, which will be linked below, along with some discounting coupon codes that you can use if you choose to buy this particular meter. Uh, here you can see it's $30.99. Shipping to Nebraska is $3.31. And there's a couple of different pictures that uh, you can come here and you can check out. What I wanted to do is I wanted to go down and take a look at some of the specification. It's a 3.5 inch screen. It can measure DC voltage from 0.8 volts to 620. It has a plus 5% and three digit resolution, which is pretty par for the course, pretty industry standard. AC voltage from 2.2 volts to 620. Resistance one ohm to one mega ohm. Um, you can measure capacitance. You can measure uh, frequency in the form of Hertz up to one kilohertz. Uh, if you come down here, it shows you your resolution for that. You can measure duty cycle diode identification uh, for less diodes less than three volts. We're going to go ahead and we're going to test that. 
it has a voltage, um, non-contact voltage detection uh, where it will beep an alarm. It has a live check where you can use a probe uh, to check to see if something has volt live voltage on it. It's powered off of an 800 uh, milliamp hour lithium ion rechargeable battery, which is nice. And it goes through some package size and weight. One thing I did want to point out here, and it's the main reason we're going through the specification, is that this does not measure current. So you cannot measure amps. So one of the things I wanted to talk about is this is a smaller pocket multimeter. And as a result, we shouldn't expect it to do things that larger multimeters can do. Um, it's nice when small meters can do that, but that's not always the case. So what you need to do is take a look at the features and functions that any meter provides, make a determination if the cost of that meets the value equation for the things that you want. Um, this particular meter does not have the ability to measure current. And I know a lot of people will be like, oh man, for 30 bucks, it should measure current, blah, 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 and all of those things. But what I will say is that there are more expensive pocket multimeters on the market that people see as the holy grail of multimeters that don't measure current. This Fluke 101, for example. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the meter and its functions. Here we have a temperature display and it is in centigrade at 22.9. We have an auto function button that will allow us to cycle through the various features of the multimeter. We also have this uh, capacitance button here, which is a quick jump to test capacitance. Um, pressing this button will take me through resistance measurements and continuity testing. And then we are back at capacitance. At any time, I can go back to auto mode by toggling the top button. And one of the things that uh, we like to test multimeters with here at the Smoke and Ape channel is this DDM Check Plus. I do have a video on this particular device if you want to check that out. Um, what I want to show is that on the auto feature, um, we can go ahead and switch between things that we're measuring. Uh, so for example, the DDM Check Plus is set for AC voltage right now. So let's go ahead and connect up. And then you can see that it is measuring AC voltage and that is the range that it should be in. Um, I can go ahead and I can switch this down to DC voltage. And then you can see that is the correct, the, the correct reading and you can see how it's switched. Now I'm going to go over and we're going to go through a series of resistance um, tests. So let's go ahead and do that now. So this should be 100 ohms and you can see we're at 99 point something. This should be one kilo ohm and we are at 999 or 998, which is within spec. This should be 10,000 ohms. And we are at 9.98, which again is in spec. And this should be 100,000 ohms or one kilo ohm. And we are within spec. So that is how this auto feature works. Now with this same tool, we can measure other things. So let's go ahead and check capacitance. So with the DDM Check Plus, we have one microfarad. Let's see if I can get these probes in there. And there you go. We are at 1.069. And this is 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad. This is 10 nanofarad or 0.01 microfarad. And this is 0 0.001 microfarad or 0.9, it should be one um, nanofarad. So there we go, that works and this is uh, within spec. Now I can change the switch and do these manually like we talked about. I wanted to do some continuity testing. Hopefully you can hear that okay. It uh, is not the most robust of connections, but it should work fine. So let's say we have something like this connector and we want to see if there's continuity on the shield. And there we go. We get a, we get a good solid clean reading. Let's take a look at diodes. 
Okay, real quick, we're going to do a diode test here. We're just going to test to see if it has enough uh, enough power to do a forward voltage check on these different diodes, these light emitting diodes. Here we go, red, yellow, green, blue, and white. Uh, red has the lowest power requirement. White has the highest. I believe red is somewhere around 1.5 volts, and white can be as high as 4 volts. Now, in the uh, description for this particular device, it said it could do forward voltage testing up to three volts. And you can see that that red light is coming on. And we are getting a reading for yellow. And we're getting a reading for green. We are getting a reading for blue. And we are getting a reading from white. As we cycle through the modes, there is a non-contact voltage it looks like ncu but that's supposed to be an ncv so let's go ahead and test that so here we are with non-contact voltage and this should pick up something so this is not the most sensitive for non-contact voltage we also have this live function that allows you to use the red probe. And uh, there we go. So we also have the ability to measure duty cycle and frequency. And we are going to again use the DMM check plus, which is outputting an AC signal right now. So let's go ahead and connect up and see what we get. And it is a 50% duty cycle at 100 Hertz. That is the correct reading. So just some final thoughts. We are starting to see more and more of these flat, knobless uh, digital multimeters. I don't have a problem with multimeters like this. Um, they are a little bit of an adjustment for somebody like me because I prefer the older school style of multimeters. Um, like this NN8008, AN for example. Um, but I like meters like this too because they are easy to stick in places like a pouch or a bag. It makes the ability to have a multimeter on the go um, very handy. 30 bucks for this. Uh, maybe you can get a little bit of a discount with some of the discount codes. I think that that, uh, that is a fair price. Um, but that's something that you need to decide. Does this meet your needs and have the features and functions that you want? Anyhow, that's it. I want to say thank you to Banggood for sending me this for my consideration. And I want to say thank you to everybody for watching. I really appreciate it.